Good morning, my name is Steve Brunner with KOM Sports and uh, we are working with RPM Group uh, out of Denver, the uh, new event owners of the event that we'll be talking about today. I'd like to thank Derek Bouchard Hall and his staff, including Kelly Filkey, for uh, hosting today's announcement. It seems apropos that the national governing body uh, here is uh, in, in their location is hosting today's uh, festivities. Uh, at this time, uh, to make and look at Colorado Springs and its rich history, and it's getting richer, I'd like to call on uh, Mayor John Southers to make a very important announcement. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for joining us today. This is a tremendous turnout. We are here today to announce yet another major sporting event that has chosen Colorado Springs, Olympic City USA, as its host. As Olympic City USA, we can claim a tie to a lot of great athletes, whether they come here for training, sports medicine, camps or meetings, tens of thousands of elite athletes pass through our city each year. And with the announcement of this event, we'll see hundreds more from across the nation and across the world. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to announce that Colorado Springs will host the first stage of the nation's premier pro bicycle race, the Colorado Classic. This four-stage circuit race will start right here in Colorado Springs on August 10th before continuing in two other Colorado cities, Breckenridge and Denver. This is great news for Colorado Springs. As you know, ours is a city that benefits greatly from a strong tourism industry, and as Olympic City USA, a great deal of that comes from our sports ecosystem. According to a 2013 study, the sports industry brings over $240 million to Colorado Springs each year. This event, along with the prestige of elite sport, will bring significant tourism dollars, thousands of visitors, and positive national and international coverage of our beautiful city. I'd like to thank Tom Osborne of Colorado Springs Sports Corp and his team, USA Cycling. We're so proud to have USA Cycling as part of our city, RPM Sports Group, and all the sponsors that will make this event possible. We are very, very excited in Colorado Springs to be part of the Colorado Classic. Thanks so much, and I'll turn it back over to Steve Bruner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, uh, to paint in some of the details of this year's race, Jim Burrell. Thank you, Steve. And Thank you, Mayor and Tom Osborne and, uh, and USA Cycling. It's a real honor to be back here in Colorado Springs. You know, it was seven years ago that we were able to bring uh, professional bike racing back to Colorado Springs and to the state of Colorado. I mean, we've always looked at Colorado as the birthplace of stage racing. And so to come back here again uh, in 2017 to bring the Colorado um, Classic to uh, the Springs is a, a true honor. Um, I'm going to present to you not the alternative facts, but the real facts about <laughs> the Colorado Classic. Uh, again, uh, as you heard, this is a, a four-day UCI-sanctioned uh, pro men's bike race. We're also in, going to include uh, two days of uh, pro women's bike racing starting here in Colorado Springs. Uh, and then we will move on Friday. The uh, 11th of August to Breckenridge and uh, do a circuit race in Breckenridge before moving to Denver for the conclusion of two days of bike racing in Denver. Um, we're really th uh, in the middle of the planning process. You know, again, we're looking at uh, 18 world, uh, world class teams, everything from uh, the pro world tour teams to pro continental teams and some of the uh, domestic continental teams here in the U.S. Um, we're thrilled to have uh, Sean Petty, who will be uh, leading the efforts on our women's portion. Um, again, 
uh, you know, we're looking for a big impact here in Colorado Springs with this event coming off of the heels of the tour of, tour of Utah. We're looking at this migration from Utah into the Springs to begin on the 7th uh, with some activities leading through uh, the week of uh, that, that week of August and then uh, commencing with stage one of the Colorado Classic here in, uh, in the Springs. So uh, we look forward to everyone coming out uh, and, um, and welcome. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on the uh, CEO of the USA Cycling, Derek Bouchard Hall. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I am incredibly excited about this, uh, about this event for, for two reasons. First of all, this is tremendous for American bike racing to have a race of this magnitude on American soil. It really raises the profile of the sport amongst uh, the entire public to see this, not just in Colorado Springs, but across the country. It's really energizing for our community to have an event like this and bringing all of the world's best cyclists uh, to, uh, to the United States, or many of the world's best cyclists to the United States to compete and be able to watch them on, uh, on American soil competing against a lot of other Americans that, that they don't normally get to see is really exciting and it's great for our best athletes who, uh, who so often race in Europe and don't get a lot of chances to come back and race in America because they don't have huge events that justify their, their travel. So being able to come here to Colorado Springs and to compete in such a, in, an important, significant race is really fantastic for American cycling. The other reason why I'm so excited about this, I think it's tremendous for Colorado Springs. You know, Colorado Springs, in my view, is one of the best cities for cycling in the entire world. It's one of the few cities that has three amazing things. It has world-class mountain biking. It has world-class road riding. We're going to see that going through the Garden of Gods. And it has an enclosed velodrome at altitude. It's a very, very special combination of things that very few cities in the world have. And to be able to highlight Colorado Springs as one of the greatest cycling cities in the world with this event is great for the city that USA Cycling calls home. So we are absolutely thrilled about this, and I, and I have to thank <laughs> Mayor Southers and, and Jim and Tom for the tremendous work that they have done to make this happen. These events are very, very difficult to pull off. They're very complex, and the fact that you have embraced it and run with it on behalf of American Cycling, thank you for your, your efforts and contributions. So I can't wait for this event. Thank you. The great thing about living in this city is you walk down the streets every day and you come across Olympians. And uh, uh, in cycling especially, uh, we've got two of them today. Uh, Allison Dunlap, if you, on the way out, if you're unfamiliar, uh, look at the display out there, 2001 world champion in mountain biking. Uh, multiple World Cup uh, champion, national champion, and two-time Olympian, Allison Dunlap. <laughs> Thank you, it's an honor to be here today. And I am thrilled that a major stage race is coming back to Colorado Springs. It was, uh, it was a sad day when the um, Pro Challenge left a couple years ago, but it is great it's coming back and I wanna thank Sean for including a women's race. I am thrilled that there's gonna be a women's race. Um, the US women are some of the best in the world. Uh, we have the number one ranked woman, Megan Garnier, um, and we narrowly missed a gold medal in Rio. Um, so the, to have the U.S. women get to showcase their talents here in the U.S. and here in Colorado is just fantastic. Um, Colorado Springs is a great, a great cycling city. Um, I got my start here in cycling at the Colorado College and ended up staying here because I love riding my bike here. The Olympic Training Center is here. The airport is super convenient. Um, it's a great place to be an athlete, but it's a really good place to be a cyclist. So I can't wait to see the course profiles and the teams and the riders that are going to come. And I think it's just going to be fantastic for our city. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And it's going to be great. Uh, Norm Elvis has raced the Tour de France. He's raced the Tour of Italy. He's won a U.S. national championship. He's been an Olympian. And uh, among his other uh, winning ways, 19, year, 19 years he held the hour record. Uh, for the hour record, if you're not unfamiliar, on the track, which is a big deal, uh, and is a resident here in Colorado Springs, Norm Elvis. 
Uh, thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, everybody. Uh, I would like to say, uh, I'd express my excitement about this race uh, in a few different ways. Uh, first, there's a, there's a selfish aspect of it. I get to show my kids what I used to do, because I did it before they were born, uh, to be there at the race, to have them feel the wind come by as the, as the peladon passes, to hear that whir of the spokes uh, and of the gears. I remember that as a distinct memory when I first got my start in cycling, which was in Sacramento, California. And I traveled the world. And when I uh, chose to wind down my career, I chose Colorado Springs for the quality of life here, which is the second point that I would bring up about this race. Uh, I understand the economic impact that an event like this has. But from my perspective, there's a certain quality of life. And I would express it uh, like this. Uh, it lasts more than just the event. There's a lead up to it. And it lingers well beyond the event. Uh, because I know that in the aftermath of this event, when I'm out there riding, not because of me or who I am or was, but simply the act of riding on the bicycle, I will hear people cheer. Uh, they won't be cheering at big intersections, you know, on Academy, but I won't be riding there. Uh, but where they'll, they'll cheer about a cyclist, uh, about this pageantry that went through the city. Uh, kids will be inspired. I see this when I ride. And again, it's not for me, it's for cycling. And I remember when I was a child and how inspired I was by it. And adults will be inspired too. Uh, and I would encourage all the spectators to, uh, in the lead up to the race, go to your local bike shop, find out about these bikes that these people are riding. Find a bike that's suitable for you and learn where they're riding and learn where the good places to ride are in your neighborhood and in our city. The impact of this event lasts long after the race is done and uh, has moved on to uh, another place. So with that, back to Steve. I'd like to uh, quickly point out Michael Creed over here. Michael, raise your hand. Three time uh, a racer in the USA Pro Challenge 2012. 2011, 2012, 2013, now the director of the U23 uh, USA cycling team and was also a director for Team Smart Stop for two iterations of the USA Pro Challenge and grew up here in Colorado Springs. Um, and Danny Summerhill with United Healthcare team, Danny, uh, from Denver. And uh, Danny has raced in, I think, every USA Pro Challenge and oftentimes trains on the roads down here. So uh, they've been gracious enough uh, to I'll be making themselves available to the media uh, post event here if you want some words from them. At this time, I'd like to uh, call on Tom Osborne. Tom has been instrumental. I remember talking to him as early as uh, July. He's been, he and the constituent group here in Colorado Springs, he's uh, led that group and the bid uh, successfully, and it's been an honor to work with him. He's done a great job. Tom Osborne. Thanks, Steve. Um, first of all, I just want to thank Mayor John Southers and the City of Colorado Springs. Without the city support, uh, the LART committee, uh, we would not be here today. Tom Strand's here. He sits on the LART committee. Fred Veach, back there in the corner. Uh, this event would not happen without the city's support with the police and fire and traffic control, on and on and on. So without the city as a partner, this does not happen. Also want to do a shout out yesterday. I was up in Denver and met with Comcast and Arthur Ortigon right over here. Comcast jumped in right away in one meeting because they see the importance of this, not only as a sponsor, but as a community partner. So Arthur, thank you so much for that. El Pamar, the Pikes Peak Cycling Society. You have the whole list up there. Uh, the CVB, GE Johnson, Norwood, all of these folks jumped in right away, and without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to stage the race. Also, just to uh, let you know on a few ancillary events, uh, we have, I'll have to look at the screen. On August 9th, a press conference back here, August 9th, and then uh, we're gonna do a gala at the Broadmoor. It'll, we'll introduce the teams and have a lot of fun with that. Uh, August 10th is the race. And August 12th, and it's for the women, Sean, we would like as many women to race in the USA Cycling Pikes, or the, uh, the National Hill Climb Championships on August 12th. We also have the Broadmoor Cycling Hill Climb up on Pikes Peak. So it's going to be a great week of cycling. Um, we're, we're thrilled to work with RPM Events Group. 
and with uh, Steve Bruner and his group. So uh, thank you all for coming and a big hand for the panelists. I can say working with the uh, RPM group in Denver, we do have and have received already sponsorship for this event. It will be announced at a February 28th uh, press conference. That's a tentative date in Denver. So uh, for the members of the media, that's a, another milestone on the horizon. Any final questions? And any of these individuals will be available, especially for, uh, uh, for cameras. And we'll be hold, holding a lot of these interviews back in this area for one-on-ones. Uh, if there's no other further questions, I'd like to thank uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, for your time today. And we look forward to August 8th, 9th, and 10th here in Colorado Springs.